Hello. Today we're going to talk about TeamX and managing sessions. So I've spent a few years doing this and I have iterated a bit over those years, um, doing things by hand, um, manually typing out things as I go. And now my current solution is very, very smart. Um, it's all auto-generated for me. And to make sense of all this, I think we're going to start from the beginning and go through to my final solution, which you'll have available to you to download and use. Um, and hopefully you'll learn some tips along the way. So let's jump into it. All right, so the first thing you need to know is that tmux can be created by just running the tmux new command. And what it will do is it will create an index. And so this is just a zero index, and so it just names it zero. Um, so if you don't like that, uh, you can exit at any time just by closing the final window. Um, you can also go and name it. So you can say uh, tmux new, and with the s flag, we can call it um, something like sample. And it will open up tmux and give it that name. And so that's a helpful place to start. Um, and the thing that you need to know is that when you open tmux, the session will be mapped to the directory that you run the command in. Um, so let's exit that again and let's cd into repos. This is where all of my repositories live. And I can cd into pfl. And so we'll use this as an example today. Um, so pfl is just an abbreviation for a movie app that I'm building. And so if I wanted to, uh, I could tmux new s and then pfl. So when I run that um, in this directory, um, pfl, we'll see that it starts up in the pfl directory and it gives it the name of pfl and that's great. Um, and so I don't want to have to type that out all of the time. And so we'll exit that again. Um, I created a snippet. Uh, I can just type literally t and in um, and it's an abbreviation. And so let's let's look at it a little bit closer. It um, takes the present working directory, uses a sed command to grab the last part using regular expression, kind of the last part of the path. So we'll see here, users, Josh, repos, PFL, and this um, expression just kind of reaches for um, what's after the final slash. And so again, I could um, go to like my dot files, uh, cd dot files. And I can say t in, and it'll find the dot files folder and create the session. Um, so very helpful, very useful. But um, there is another tool that I use, um, and I have been using for many many years now, um, and it's called Zoxide. And so what Zoxide does is it allows me to. Um, you can notice so far I've sort of cd'd a lot around um, to get to the folder I want, and so an even quicker way to do that is using Zoxide with the Z command. And so when you install it, uh, which is just a uh, brew install uh, Zoxide, that's what it looks like. Um, and so it's already installed on my computer. So um, all I have to do is type Z and then type the name of any folder I want anywhere in my project. So if I do PFL, it will know to jump to repo slash PFL. So very cool tool. I can also say dot files. It'll jump to that. Um, you can even do an abbreviated version. So this is my day job. And so if I want to Z nut, it goes to the utility um, folder for me. Um, I can also jump to other places, right? It doesn't have to just be uh, a repository. It could be any folder, really. Um, and so the way that this works is Zoxide keeps track of all of your um, CD commands. And so if I go into here and I um, want to cd into something specific, um, I can change the directory to, and then I can name it, so pfl. And what happens when I run that command is Zoxide uh, will be tracking that and it will add it as like a um, item in a list. Um, and so I hope I'm explaining this right, but basically you do have to cd into it first before it exists. Um, but once you do, you can get to it at any time. Um, uh, dot files, and so it's not perfect, as you meant, as you saw. Um, it'll sometimes try to go somewhere else, um, and that's okay. You can kind of prioritize values over time, 
Um, so let's just go back to PFL and I can do TN and it will, it, it, this all works, right? And so it's, it's quick, it's fairly quick. I can jump to what I want and then I can use an abbreviation to get in. Uh, but then I asked myself, what would happen if I were to combine uh, Zoxide with sort of team accession creation? And so there's a few scenarios here. Um, let me go ahead and detach and let me um, Z to dot files and then T in. And so now we end up with these two sessions. And so now what happens if I want to connect to another, I can do tmux um, attach, right? So there's a few other commands. You can also use keyboard shortcuts to use this kind of switcher thing that's here. Um, but I decided I want to allow Zoxide to create tmux sessions for me on my behalf. And so let's take a look at what that script looks like. So um, I have a bin file and I have a script called T. And it's just a shell script. And thanks to Copilot for helping me write this. So I don't, I don't write shell scripts a lot. And so it was really helpful having that tool. Um, and so what you'll see is I call Zoxide. Uh, so Zoxide has its own uh, Zoxide query and you can query um, you know, what uh, values it has stored. And so you know, just in case I don't decide to pick one, uh, it will exit. Uh, it will find the folder name. So I can just use this command to find the folder name. And uh, I then have a couple of scenarios. One of them being I am uh, the tmux session already exists, and so I want to attach to it. Um, so we'll kind of go through the flow state here just for a few minutes to kind of take make make sense of what's going on. But uh, we just check if not in tmux uh, and session does not exist, then create the session and this will automatically connect me to it. Um, if the session already exists, then I'll just switch to it, right? It's already running, so just do that. Um, and then if we are in tmux, then I want to... Um, and the session doesn't exist, then we create the session in a detached mode. This is really important. Uh, so you kind of create it invisibly, right? Uh, and then you switch the tmux client to that newly created session. Um, and then finally, if the session exists and we are in tmux, then just switch over to that session. All right, and so this is the first version of it. And so when you think about how Z works, dot files, uh, or zpfl, right? The z command jumps me to the, that directory. Instead, I just replace it with t. And so uh, if we say which t, um, I have it added to my path. Um, and I can talk about it more at, in the comments mention if, if, you, if you want more help with how that kind of thing works. Um, but if I can just say tpfl, it will now switch to that session. And if I have one that's not open yet, like an utility, I can just say t nut or t uh, I have all sorts of ones, like all the things is one of my projects, or T downloads, right? That's not a Git project, but it's still in my Zoxide results. Um, and so this works really, 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 really great. And so let's do dot files, um, and then we will see dot files. Uh, let's go ahead and open uh, tmx.conf. I want to show you a couple of things that, that make this work really well. Um, so I used to be really set on, I have to create the session right? And I don't want to kill the session because then I'd have to go back to that directory and I'd have to create the session again, which takes a lot of keystrokes. Um, so I just would leave them open. Um, but now I found that I like closing them. Um, and this is very, very useful, this top option. Uh, this is a tmux config. Uh, detach on destroy can be turned to off. And so previously, if you kill a specific session, you end up exiting tmux and you have to get back, you have to reattach to get back in and it's sort of a pain. But once I discovered this feature, I realized that I can have this open and I can just close the final window. So here fish is my final uh, window in this session. If I close it, it will just switch to one that's already open. And so I can repeat that, I can close that and I can close that and I can close that and we can see we're back to now just one session. And so now if I want to 
open up another one again, I can just run that command again and it's, it's there for me. Now, you may wonder, hey, or have noticed already, I don't really like that I have to go to a shell, right? I have to go to my shell and then I have to run T and then the thing that I want to open, right? So there's even more friction here. Um, so this is great in concept. I love the idea. I love how it works. And when, especially when I'm at the beginning of a project um, or the beginning of the workday or something, I may have a blank screen, right? And I may be in my home directory. And so this is a great way of, of getting started. But once I ha am in my workflow, I want to be able to switch to something else very quickly without having to um, get to an empty buffer and run it. And so the way that TeamX works is it also offers these pop-ups. And so I have a pop-up for my history. This is sort of a good example. Um, but what I've also done is I've created another script. And, and so this is called TT. And so it does something very similarly, except instead of it being a command in the shell, it's going to be a TeamX fuzzy finder pop-up. So there's this thing called FCF that's really, really great at um, giving you filterable lists and then running commands based off of the selection that you make. And so this one works almost the same way, but it's, if you're not in TeamX, I'm gonna run just a, a generic FCF command and we're gonna pipe it through uh, Zoxide query and list all of the potential directories. So that's what this does. And then I can type out what I want and hit enter. And when I do that, it's going to do the same thing as before, it's gonna say, is there already a session? If so, I'm going to attach to it. If there isn't a session, then I'm going to create one. And then the same thing with while I'm inside of TMUX. So if I'm in an existing session, um, it does almost the same thing, but it lists it in a uh, FCF. Uh, let's see, where is this? It lists it in an FCF TMUX session. So FCF TMUX. Um, and so I'll show you, I'll show you how this works. Uh, but well, all you need to know is it's sort of the same logic, but it's a pop-up. And so if I hit, I have it bound to command J and I have a video about how I can make Mac OS keyboard shortcuts in my Alacrity uh, terminal edit, uh, emulator. And so if I hit command J, we see a pop-up. And so it's not very useful here because everything's sort of zoomed in, but I can say PFL and hit enter and it switches right to it. Um, same with downloads or all the things and so you can, can begin to see that if I want to switch I just instead of having this screen where I switch um, I can just do command J and I can say I want uh, dot files please and it'll switch to it or if I want um, the utility the work thing I can switch to it and so this is incredibly fast it's incredibly easy um, I can just kill things that I don't want. Even when I reach for things I don't go too much, lazy git. So lazy git is one of them. Um, you'll see there's a few results here, and I may need to zoom out a little bit so you can see. Um, and so sometimes there's gonna be multiple results, but thankfully I can just um, select the one that I want because it's really explicit here. And so this is the GitHub project. And so here's a Go project, right? It's in a completely different place, but because I've CD'd into it once, it is now available for me in this pop-up. Um, there's also another common one I go to that is not where I expect it. Um, and so, of course, we have all these repos, which is where most things are. But in case I want to reach somewhere else, it just exists. Um, and if I were to do a temporary project, all I have to do is make directory CD, and it now is available for me to, to do that. Um, and so this is just a great tool. I really, really enjoy um, the way that it works and the way that it um, just speeds up everything for me. You can bind it to whatever key binding you want. Um, all you have to do is download the scripts. They're really, really basic. So if you don't like something about it, you can always tweak and change it. Um, but yeah, that is how I manage uh, TMX sessions. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. Um, please subscribe. There's more videos coming and feel free to hit that like button if you liked it um, and leave me a comment if you have a way that you like doing it that's different than this. I always love um, finding new ways of doing things. Uh, until then, see you guys next time.